Ivan Lendl, the killer with the ice-cold eyes, who we hardly seem to know at all. Wherever you looked in 1982, it was these three who were disputing the major titles. At Wimbledon, Connors beats McEnroe. At the US Open, Connors beats Lendl. At the Masters final, Lendl beats McEnroe. And in the WCT final, McEnroe beats Lendl. For three years now, Poland's Wojciech Fiebeck has been Lendl's mentor. Their arrival at Queen's Club for practice got off to a bad start. There's no parking search and all this stuff's got out. Look, that's what they're here for. To Feeback and his wife, Eva, Ivan is like a brother. To their children, a warm-hearted uncle. But to the world at large, he presents an aloof and enigmatic image. Mr. Carl, the, the women of them, Carl. <coughs> the man who brought Ivan to Queen's, tournament director Clive Bernstein. Yes, they're up in the same place. On the same Last year, Lendl won over $2 million with 15 tournament victories and a record 106 winning matches, most of them on indoor carpets or cement. Although Ivan hasn't played enough on grass to like it yet, he's no stranger to the surface. And there's Ivan Lendl. Now, he's had a fantastic season. He won the Orange Bowl tournament at the beginning of the year, and he's cleaned all the junior titles available to him. In Europe, he's won in Italy, again in Paris, and now here at Wimbledon. And easily the outstanding junior player of the year. He was 18 then in 1978, but when did he first dream of becoming the world's number one? Well, I was wanted to win all the matches I was playing, and uh, I wasn't looking so far ahead. I was always looking one level up. So. And when you did begin, I believe it was your mother, wasn't it, who had the greatest influence on you? Well, she was playing herself and uh, she was bringing me to the court every day, so uh, there was nothing else I could do than to play with the ball too. And I know you've recently published a book, and uh, in that you tell us that you first beat your mother when you were 14. Yes, I think I was 14 and uh, it was uh, very nice to beat her for the first time. Let's turn now to your two main rivals for the world number one spot, Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe. You played them both at the US Open last year. What's the difference playing them? Well, John comes in all the time and Jimmy just stays back and hits the ball very hard. On the fast asphalt at Flushing Meadow, Lendl has enough time against McEnroe's lighter ground strokes and second serves to go for his winners. It all makes for an intimidating spectacle that is quite breathtaking. string shot this was. And the, on the run, he's able to hit that ball and find that small gap. He must have hit that ball at 100 miles an hour. That really was a tremendous forehand. It really was. On the run too. 15 all. with top spin and look how far away the ball from the ball McEnroe was. Not to be an easy shot to execute that. Even off the ground with both feet Mark and so such a confident stroke there. Senior watching it with uh, some awe, rather like his son. 
France at the moment is being ruthlessly and utterly dominated. I can't remember when uh, I saw this happen. up against it. That was really a very, very fine, well-placed second service, and a new could winner of the high part of the net like that. Already, against Jimmy, the serve is not as important as against John, because uh, Jimmy doesn't come in on, on the second serves, and uh, and uh, with him, it's more important how my footwork is and uh, how I, how deep and hard I hit the ball from the baseline. Because if I can out hit him, then everything is fine. If he out hits me, then uh, I have trouble. And out hit him he did. Connors was pumped up as never before, and Jimmy feels very possessive about the U.S. Open. The U.S. Open is important to me always because it is in the United States. It is uh, my championship, so to speak, uh, of the United States and. Uh, if I play in front of a crowd there that uh, equals my attitude towards my tennis, which kind of brings out the best in me also. Connors there having the wrong end of the stick but still manages to pull out a, a passing shot that found uh, Glendale wanting. Just couldn't control his forehand volley. 15 off. service there with the volley behind it from Connors.
honors this fourth US title, eight years after his first, was a triumph of dynamic energy. For Lendl, disappointment that another chance to win a first Grand Slam title had been denied him. But he'll go on trying. I think it's Ivan really has been working very hard. And his achievement is uh, it's incredible what he has achieved regarding that he doesn't have that much talent and he's not playing that natural tennis as, uh, for example, as John McEnroe. He has improved tremendously his backhand serve. And I think that he's, uh, he has to be very happy what he has achieved. He's not a happy type. I mean, he's not offering uh, smiles to easy on. He's rather reserved on the court and off the court as well. But he's different with friends. And all of my friends uh, happen to like him and he's good friends with them. So I think when he respects someone, when he thinks and he gives credit to someone for uh, either he thinks uh, someone is smart or he, he just respects him, then he's, he's very nice. But otherwise, he's very reserved, and he's a very private man. Was the uh, cold look that we see on the court a deliberate decision? I think, in a way, it, it was planned. But at the same time, it suits uh, Ivar's character. And even if I was to plan that for myself, I don't think I could do it, because I'd be just different. The same uh, Jimmy Connors. I mean, he has to say something on the court. He has to be funny, or he has to he has to react to certain things. But Ivan uh, really is trying to be like Borg, except for that that Borg was uh, one could say Borg was nicer about the manner he's been handling everything. He was he was quiet, but at the same time, where Ivan is a little more tougher. He wants to be a tough guy out there. He wants to prove that, that he will take anything and everything the way the way the way he, he wants it. In the WCT Dallas final in May, there was further disappointment. Lendl, the holder, faced a much more aggressive McEnroe than the man he'd beaten for the seventh time in a row at the Masters four months earlier. The touch of McEnroe really on those volleys is quite remarkable. One there. He has such good hands. The hand that he has at just in a strange level between points. And the serve much, much too short. There's a threat for the champion that his first two service points in this tie break taken from him. <laughs> Time and again today, he's found the big serve at the crucial moment. Seventeen aces he served. Always at his best. One of the best servers I have ever seen. He has disguise, he has accuracy. For all from that rather closed, crouching stance.
Very, very lonely walk for Lendl. Six luck. His whole game has fallen apart. McEnroe has taken this match by the scruff of the neck like a true champion. Winner here, remember, in 1979, 1981. And now just one point away from a unique third title. Today, John is keenly aware of the need to keep his emotions in check. I think I've learned a lot over the years, and it doesn't always show. And I think in the long run, I, I have to control a little bit better, or else I won't get the best tennis I can get out of my game. And uh, I think it's slowly going in that direction. You know, there's a few things that have hit me just recently at the French Open. The thing that happened to me the first round and the hoopla that surrounded it made me realize that people are still looking out for it and that uh, I can't just hope that people are going to forget about it. I'm going to have to do something about it. And uh, I think I did learn a lesson from that, but only time will really tell. But there were no outbursts in last Sunday's Queen's final, where John aggravated February's shoulder injury and found Connors as ruthlessly efficient as he'd been the year before. 15 yards. So that beautiful half volley pick up by Connors uh, by McEnroe answered with the most glorious touch across the court there. Many people say that with two hands you can play with more sensitive touch than with one. there, Dan, thought that that hit the line beyond the service line, the side line, beyond, beyond the service line. 30 to 10. all right That's it. quick as his reactions are he didn't have time to get out of the way of that one What is important about it, of course, it is the break point to Connors. Oh, 
Oh, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. The controlled fury of Connors in this mood is truly awesome. McEnroe now at 3-6, 3-5. seen the ball hit so consistently hard as this. I really haven't. Fifteen thirty. A very fine dipping return, but one thought that uh, McEnroe should have had it on the half volley. So that awe-inspiring forehand from Connors gives him two championship points. Flexes of uh, McEnroe there to get away with that volley. Quite unbelievable. So that's one championship point saved. Inspiring tennis by uh, Connors it really was. There's an unmistakable Monday morning feeling at Queen's as they start to dismantle the tournament. But Jimmy, accompanied by brother John, is back for a brisk workout and, like the true professional he is, attending to every detail. Because these are okay on days like this. You got plenty of these, and I'll send over half a dozen, a dozen of a polyurethane too. With 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 this grip on the bottom. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. His opponent today, Vetus Gerolitis. How does Connors, now 30, maintain such dynamic enthusiasm? Probably the biggest point is I'm enjoying my tennis so much. Uh, I've gone back and, and worked very hard and, and tried to get back to the top of my game, which I have done. Uh, I went back to the basics, I should say, and, and uh, did what it took at the beginning to get me uh, started on my career. But uh, the enjoyment that I've gotten out of it, uh, the working hard, the, the concentration, the competition, uh, just playing the, the matches in general is, uh, is probably the biggest thing that I should say that uh, keeps me going right now. Wimbledon uh, was, was 
a great thrill because number one, I hadn't won a, a Grand Slam title in, in three years. Uh, and then I hadn't won Wimbledon since 1974. I had three chances in the middle and uh, they bypassed me and I thought that uh, it would be a mistake to, to let that one go by. I had a great chance to do it. Uh, I've, I've been playing very good tennis throughout the course of the, the year, 1983. Uh, I did play very well at Queens. I hit the ball very firm and very solid uh, throughout the whole tournament. But I'm not too worried because that's the level of which I practice all the time. I try to reach that kind of level in practice as I try to play in my matches. John McEnroe and Ivan Lendl, contestants in last year's final of the Volvo Grand Prix Masters, when Lendl won in straight sets. Tonight, the two meet again. Good evening and welcome to a final over the best of five sets, which offers Lendl of Czechoslovakia the chance to emulate the feat in the early 70s of the Romanian Irina Nastasi, winning the Masters title three years running. It's a final two in which there's a great deal of pride at stake. McEnroe has yet to win a set against Lendl in their meetings at Madison Square Garden. Lendl desperately needs a major title at the end of a tennis year in which he's twice failed abysmally in Grand Slam finals. And McEnroe wants to remove any lingering doubts that he is the best player in the world. And it's McEnroe who leads 3-2 in the first set as we join our commentators Dan Mascom and John Barrett with Lendl about to serve. Wojciech right. Feedback able to smile at the moment, sitting at the court side because his protege Lendl has made a very good start indeed in defence of this title. Although Lendl's volume has improved in the last six months, particularly there, he was a bit slow. He was playing that volley from somewhere around the service line. He could clean at least another yard or two in. McEnroe is beautifully poised throughout this rally. His footwork is tremendous, bouncing on his toes. And he plays a superb shot there. He had to keep that ball low or he was dead. And it was enough to produce the error, wide of the line. Thirty on. Well, Ivan Lendl paying the penalty here for a rather short second serve. McEnroe able to move easily in, has plenty of time to find a winning angle. Break point. In the uh, six games that have been played, that the uh, service has gone past one point against the serve, and here 
resulted in the first break of the match. Supreme low backhand volley of a murderously hit forehand. Magnificent stroke by uh, the server Mahindra. trying to find a way past McEnroe at the net. The slow court enabling him to have plenty of time to make that beautiful backhand pass, but at the moment anyway, McEnroe reading him so well in the forecourt. Third is. Third is McEnroe and uh, I must say he looks sharper than he's been uh, all this week and he was certainly sharp enough against Johan uh, Creek, the former South African now an American citizen when he won five magnificent games in a row playing the sort of tennis that people dream about. Certainly the best tennis I think I've ever seen him play, including that tennis that he played so marvellously against Borg in the final some two or three years ago. Plenty then to think about for the defending champion. It was not about to panic. Remember, this is a five-set match, not three. I think if it was a three-set match at two-five down, he'd be a little bit worried, but uh, he's got plenty of time to put this match together. At the moment, the problem for him is that anything short allows McEnroe to come to the net. McEnroe coming in also sometimes on some shots that are fairly deep and taking risks. So it's the bluff tactic of McEnroe working and beating the uh, defensive qualities of Lendl from the baseline. So with the first change of balls, Lendl will be serving at 2-5. Lendl has stopped the rot. He's lost nine consecutive points until that uh, return went into the net. squeezed in inside the line and here he's taking it very early and you see how near the line it is coming quietly up to the baseline, serving for the first set. Yeah. 
I wonder if McEnroe just hesitated there slightly, thinking the ball might be flying out. Give us a chance to make our own opinion as we watch it again. It was an easy enough looking volley. He just faded his wrist as he went to play, trying to drop it short, I think, rather than punching it deep, which he could have done from that height. Just in all. serve a double fork when you're serving for the first set. There's no sign of strain about that. It was just a badly timed ball. Three thirty all first set. Ah! And then we'll get to break point. after a couple of errant volleys in this game, at last he finds one which is wide enough to force a quite simple reply from Lendl and present uh, McEnroe with an easy winner. So the break point saved. Deuce. So, set point with the fourth ace. Uh, what an ace it is. You wrong-footed him this time. Lendl, I think, probably expecting it down the middle, swung a bit late and missed. just one service break, but for all that, the balance strongly in McEnroe's favour. Can Lendl change it? Well, it's one all in the second set as we rejoin the match with Lendl about to serve. Decisive stroke, making her presented with a, a gift there.
Well, I'm not sure about his grammar there, but still, there's no doubt about the embarrassment caused by depth on that attempted backhand into the net. And here McEnroe at his very, very best, taking the ball extremely early, taking risks and going in, guessing right or judging right, and punching that winning volley. Attempting then, I think, to put extra slice. Yes, he's going through his mind with the action of the hand there. Attempting to put extra slice to keep the low ball against uh, the man who much prefers a higher ball than that. But just catching the top of the tape. So it's still break point. And McEnroe in this game has been returning the serve quite extraordinarily well. consecutive volleys that uh, put out by Lendl when he had a chance, not of making winners, but of putting them back into court. He's just made one there, and it's a break of service result. Well, Ivan Lendl really can't find a way past the man who keeps charging in against him today. Last year in this final, McEnroe stayed at the back a lot and rallied from the baseline, perhaps then, believing in his own mind that he was the equal of Lendl at the baseline, but of course he's not. He doesn't hit as hard. He doesn't have the penetration off the ground. And the only way to embarrass Lendl really is to do what McEnroe has been doing successfully so far in this match, taking the chances, coming in on everything, and committing Lendl to go for his winners. John McEnroe achieving that break of serve for the 2-1 lead earlier than he did it in the third set. among the spectators here, packed into the courtside boxes. drive volley that went out. Small oh, wonder that he paused after this one, because really it wasn't necessary to be that good. Lendl was moving the wrong way. from McEnroe, who has to make an awful lot of ground, but he can't get it right away from Lendl. 
And the problem here, again, that he hasn't got depth on that. Lendl plenty of time to whip up the top spin and find that angle. So just a glimmer of a chance for Lendl. 15.30 on Nakano now. Absolutely magic touch on the McEnroe racket here. First of all, that half volley, which is so beautifully controlled. And here, just dropping the ball dead. Exquisite touch. Off really a very fast hit back end cross court pass attempt. 40-30. break of service was enough to give McEnroe the first set. He's made the break here, so Lendl is really in trouble. And McEnroe is really in supreme form, and that's no exaggeration. Lendl had to take his courage in both hands here because the lob was absolutely perfect. It couldn't have been deeper. And the risk was to miss hitting it so hard, but what a beautiful attempt it was. directed straight at the body of McEnroe, who was going to run round it, but couldn't. And it was a beautifully directed serve, and of course, he could have done anything with that for his winner. five set final and uh, seems to me Dan that Lendl here now is deciding to hit harder because that is his best tactic on these courts and yet time and again McEnroe has guessed right has moved to the right place it's not an easy problem for him to solve no I think not John but you know that's the first time he's served a love game and as we so often said to serve a love game or win a love game is one of the biggest lifters you can you can get at this so, um, although he's behind, that was a, a hardening sign for him in our game, I think. Well, a better service game for Ivan Lendl. Just keeping him alive in this set. A second break against him, I think, would have been... Pretty horrible. 
but he hasn't really solved McEnroe's serve yet. He's buried it so well. So John McEnroe trying to preserve this break. He's three to ahead in the second set. Now there is one of the most astonishing returns I've seen for a long time. A really deep first service and just a sudden flick of the of the arm and a winner that you could hardly see in a cross court pass that was quite remarkable. And it's the return of serve that sets up this point for him. Struck wide of McEnroe, who therefore has to make a defensive volley and leave the gap. first set and that's the fifth of the match for McEnroe. Serving very, very fast, McEnroe is still able to get read, uh, right under the net. Getting so close, he's so quick getting in. Usually, uh, players have to slow the serve down just a trifle to give themselves a chance to uh, blanket the net, but not McEnroe today. Joe Beerman there on the line, being whistled by some of the crowd who thought that was a fault, as McEnroe, I think, did. He hesitated, but remains a fault. Well, now, here's that extraordinary return of serve from the game before the last one. The serve directed straight at the body of McEnroe. Just asking for quiet. 2-4. how keyed up or you hear how keyed up McEnroe is you know he's hardly made really uh, uh, a normal sort of error he makes one there and feels he's committed a crime Well, 
of course, Lendl decided to run round on his four, and he has a choice here. Could have gone either way. Perhaps saw McEnroe begin to move. So, went into the gap. Nice forehand return pass, but Lendl following the serve in rather slowly. by Lendl, the back end cross court volley was uh, certainly unexpected by McEnroe. And the back end volley he plays here is worthy of McEnroe himself, beautifully held on the racket face to get the angle. But Well, we saw a change of tactics there from Ivan Lendl. He's clearly decided that he's not today, at any rate, going to beat McEnroe by staying at the back of the court. So to prevent McEnroe from taking the net position, he's going to get there himself first on his own service games. Now, the interesting thing will be to see if he attempts to do that on the McEnroe service game, whether he attempts to chip and charge, which is what McEnroe has been doing to him. So this Madison Square Garden Arena, which is so famous in the sporting annals of America, where they play all sorts of major sports, basketball and ice hockey chief among them, is an ideal arena for a championship like this, with 19,000 fans crammed into the seats in every seat with a perfect view of the court. I'm not sure, though, that it's the best place to play the Masters every year because it should be the culmination of the Grand Prix circuit, which is played on clay, mostly, indoors, grass and cement. And to my way of thinking, so should the Masters be played on those varying surfaces to reflect the culmination of that tour. Boy, check feedback in the top of your picture there keeping an eye on his protégé Lendl. He must be more pleased with the way events are going now, but still he hasn't solved the problem of breaking McEnroe's serve. Mac timing and rhythm but hitting Lendl having to produce a really remarkable shots to make his pass not only are we seeing a great tennis player here in, uh, in McEnroe, but Lendl, of course, having to play against a man, a really great athlete. Men move so beautifully. But you
And for the first time in the match, John McEnroe risking a drop shot from half court and a perfect moment to do it. It's the element of surprise on those occasions that is so important. And yesterday against Zelanda, he tended to overdo it and have the, the, uh, the shot read. Well, I'm quite sure there's no other player in the world that would have made a winning uh, volley off that remarkable fast and low return of Lenville's taken early. And so Lenville now having to serve to stay in this second set. services like that, Lindo. Oh. And McEnroe persisting with the tactic of chipping and going in, but that one really not very deep and fast as he is today, and quickly as he's seeing the ball, simply too quick. Hold him up. And a brilliant lob by Lendl. Half volley, top spin lob, a gem of a stroke. second set and an exact repetition of the first just one break of serve there has been the first set it came in the sixth game and this set it came in the third a set in which Lendl started serving first so this time it will be 5-4 as McEnroe prepares to serve well now when he did it last time he was a little bit shaky in the first set went 15-30 down with a double fault but steadied himself and came back now of course he has the confidence of that first set beneath his belt but there'll still be the pressure there as he comes up to serve in a moment. Well, John Lendl had uh, a break point in that last game of the first set, you know. But somehow one, uh, one sees such brilliant play from McEnroe today, one can't see that he's going to lose this game on his serve. Well, now, what a marvellous situation here for John McEnroe. He can just hold this serve. And everybody buzzing with excitement around this arena. He's never taken a set from Lendl before, before today, in the Madison Square Garden Masters matches that they played, the two of them, the last couple of years. And he's asking the people behind Lendl just to be seated quickly so that they don't move around and disturb his view of the ball. Five, four then. McEnroe to serve.
Backhand turn pass just in. And there's a disturbance in the crowd there. He's talking to somebody in the crowd facing him there. And he tends to be in trouble when he misses his first serve. This second one, woefully short. Five four thirty or second set. So that very fast and deep uh, first service in is McEnroe. Set point. Find a volley as Lindell has played all week. Beautifully glided forehand volley out to the sideline. Just as he did in the first set, Landel has earned himself a chance to break the McEnroe serve, this time with a quite superb early taken forehand return. And each time McEnroe has been in trouble, when he was 15 30 down, he found two superb first serves. Can he do it again? Break point. Well, there's an overrule here. The linesman himself corrected it. And we'll have a look at it for ourselves here. And I think you'll agree, a beautiful ace. Lendl, sportsman that he is, agreeing with Dr. Charles Beck there and the linesman who corrected it himself. Six, six face, and this brilliant serve here is back in row another set point. Oh, that's out of 
this world. And John McEnroe leading the cheers in this giant arena for that truly wonderful, wonderful half volley from John McEnroe. The serve was superb, the cross-court return was remarkable, and this brilliant. So 42 minutes second set, they've been playing for an hour and 12 minutes, and we saw one of the greatest strokes that you'll ever see on a tennis court as McEnroe played that serve and that unbelievable angled half volley. Just look at it from the original angle again, how much ground he has to make, but what control of the racket face. And Lendl powerless. Set number three. Second double port from uh, Vendel. still having to uh, contend, confront, be confronted by this rampant uh, returner of the serve followed by the volley. Really is returning the serve quite magnificently. Keeping absolutely calm and getting the ranking back well and early as he whips that pass, the winning shot. I think the problem here for McEnroe is going to be to maintain this high level of play that he set himself. I don't recall seeing him hit the ball so cleanly and so sweetly and time it so well and have so much power at the same time without error. One has seen him force before and make errors. 
as he actually did in that last game, but before that, in the previous games of the first two sets, he's been absolutely remarkable. But it does take its toll. He's keeping his concentration absolutely tight on this match, as he must. But one knows from past experience that he's so volatile, and uh, it only takes small things to upset him. And the problem for him is going to be to maintain this very, very high level against the man who's just waiting for the chance to make his impression on the match. And remember that a couple of years ago when uh, Lendl won here against Gerolitis, he lost the first two sets then. He's quite capable of coming back in these conditions that suit him so well and to win. He saved a uh, match point in the third set against Gerolitis. But uh, today, McEnroe really is keeping up the pressure and keeping control against a man who hits the wall harder and one of the toughest men in the game. Perhaps the best indoor court player in the world. And uh, as you say, whether McEnroe can hold onto this superlative form, it would be interesting to see, I must say. Lendl is certainly the most dynamic indoor player, winning 99 of his last 104 matches indoors. And the top left there, Don Budge, one of the world ranking panel. The others being Lou Hode, who's having a operation on a tendon in his leg and can't be here and Fred Perry of Great Britain who's indisposed and in Florida and can't be here either. double fort from McEnroe, which in itself I think tells a story when you think that uh, he, like his opponent, didn't serve anything short. And so they really have to risk a bit for going for really deep and strong second services. What a wonderful rally, and when you consider where Lendl is at the end of this rally, the lob itself, quite a good one, McEnroe can't get it away, and beautifully improvised half volley, very deep. But that last shot, absolute clean winner from the baseline. Remarkable. it's Lendl who has the ball served straight at his body the most difficult point from which to return is under the right armpit there
Well, for most of today, McEnroe has been outthinking Lendl. He's moving just half a yard quicker, and he's being a little more inventive. Any left? Any left? Ask McEnroe. Martin Parker is the official. There he is, shaking his head. Well, this does get the fans going. Those who can't stand any query of decisions. There is Martin Parker, but uh, Charlie Beck not about to overall. Fifteen all. No. Lack of positioning there against a moderate ball. Mendel really stretching and completely mistiming the forehand. game of the second set where Lendl was broken. 15-40 now. seen such relentless pressure against the uh, service and the second serve picture as we're seeing from this man today. 2-1 to McEnroe and the pattern of the second set repeated, a break in the third game. And the pattern stayed, no further breaks of service to 4-3. A moment surely for supreme effort by Lendl to break the McEnroe serve. McEnroe certainly having to scamper there three times across the whole width of the uh, of the court. And this is just where Lendl certainly needs to break. Lendl almost uh, having to bring off a, a, a shot that was really not on, low ball, coming forward at tremendous speed and having to go over the high part of the net. He might have been better off perhaps to have gone across court, but there wasn't much time to think about what to do there. 30-15.
Moments like this, key moments in a match, when his temperament is going to be tested. Well, now, I wonder if we can see for ourselves whether we think the ball is in or out. There's the pass, and it looks certainly to be out, as we thought it was when we saw it happen. And John McEnroe, a momentary loss of temper, and just had a warning from umpire Charles Beck. A public warning. And it's the reaction that caused the warning. It's deuce. And if McEnroe has been supreme in this match, Lindell certainly was in that rally. Absolutely the best rally that he's played. And it's earned him a break point. That's it. Anticipation absolutely won. The anticipation was so good that the back end volley, cross court volley, was almost a simple shot. of no return. The man who's held the championship for the last two years and playing his uh, fourth final today, he really has got to be at his serving best, I think, to stay in this match. Oh, no. out of the McEnroe book there as Lendl plays a very exquisite forehand volley. Drop volley rather. It's in.
Well, that was a chance to uh, bring himself to two match points. Well, hard as he tried there, John McEnroe couldn't crank the Lendl serve. A little over-pressing. But what a good game he finally played on his own serve with all the pressure on his shoulders. And now just four points away from that elusive second victory here. He won in 1979 when he beat Arthur Ashe after being two match points behind. And for this man through the net there, Ivan Lendl, the end of a dream for him because he thought if he could win this title for the third time running, there was just a faint chance that he might have been awarded the world champion accolade. Never in my book was, that, was he worthy of that this year because he hasn't won any major title, any title of real importance. All the big championships, in all the big championships, he failed. No more tragically than in the final of the US Open here in New York back in September against Jimmy Connors. And the cheers ring out for the New Yorker, John McEnroe, who this man, Ivan Lendl, has to break now. So John McEnroe poised just four points away from victory, but there'll be four of the hardest points he's ever won in his life. 5-4. And you could almost feel the concentration and determination in this rally. First the volley deep to the back end, almost out but beautifully placed, and then the punch into the gap. He was where he should be astride the net. And inevitably the crowd beginning to get excited as they sense the match nearing its end and it's putting McEnroe off. That's his fourth double fourth. So that service brings two match points for Nagamore.
It's called out. It's called out. And the title goes to McEnroe. So, a straight set victory for McEnroe, 6 3, 6 4, 6 4. The match lasted an hour and 52 minutes, and certainly I don't think I've seen McEnroe play a better match than that. Well, no phrase could be higher from a man who's seen them all. And surely no doubt now that McEnroe will be named world champion. And so on this 15th day of 1984, we come to the official end of the tennis year 1983. A year in which so many of the good things and the bad were wrapped up in one man, Master McEnroe. Good night. <laughs>